Here we go again, fellas. Scape and Run Parasites 1.9.6 through 1.9.8 updates have been released. The 1.9.6 update is thick, which means I'm going to completely skip over crash and bug fixes, most of the config changes, and other things you guys probably don't care about. Also, this is part one of two videos. This video in particular will only be showcasing mob changes in 1.9.6. Be on the lookout for part two, where we will be covering the rest of the updates. Before we dive in, I'd like to thank Pecora and Zuko for helping me with this video. Zuko provided helpful information over important content, and Pecora, an artist for SRP, answered an ungodly amount of questions I had concerning these updates. Pecora's channel is linked in the cards. They make update teasers for Scape and Run, and honestly, they're really well done. Alright, enough of that, let's get to the updates. I know plenty of you are itching to see the new mobs, but first let's cover the changes current mobs have received. Several mobs have had their base values tweaked. The parasites in question are Beck in Stage 1, Stage 2, Stage 3, Stage 4, Primitive Long Arms, Overseer, Vigilante, Warden, and Light Bomber. There have been a few individual parasite changes. The host gets opening dibs. This skeleton concoction spawns differently and teleports now. An assimilated human or villager is required to kill five skeletons for the host to spawn. For its teleporting ability to work, its current and potential future position need to meet certain conditions. The summoner can rebuild slain parasites by using biomass on their remains. I believe the same parasite can be rebuilt over and over again without a limit, or at least it seems that way. With that in mind, make sure to focus the summoner in battle. You should always go for the healers first, or in this case, the necromancer. Your friendly neighborhood spider parasite has upgraded. Arachnida will now pull up targets if it's above them, and it will try to pull players down if they're flying. Arachnida will shoot projectiles before pooling, and it will pool targets for 7 seconds. Once the serration is over, it will go into melee. The parasite will also leave after pooling. Beckons have been altered as well. Beckon Stage 3 will no longer generate colonies, and it will not grow into Stage 4 if a node is in range. Beckons spawned by Stage 4 will not grow, and Stage 4s will not upgrade the assimilated Ender Dragon anymore. Staying on theme, we have more individual parasite changes. I hope you're ready because I'm going to rapid fire this section. Sim horses go kaplooey now if low health. Sim Ender Dragon can lose its heads and wings. Losing its head spawns a Sim Dragon Head, which is a new mob. The Sim Dragon can naturally spawn in the end's outer islands from phase 3 to 5 with a spawn weight of 2. Heavy Bomber is back in the mod. More on it and the Dragon Head later. Grunt's speed and attack range increased. Sentry, Overseer, and Vigilante's shooting range increased. Vigilante's projectiles apply corrosive now. Yellow Eye shoots nade entities. Adapted to Yellow Eye and Dreadnought don't shoot homing projectiles anymore. Moving Flesh now has passive regen. Roopters will place something called a Buglin Tunnel if it has 5 or more kills. They will stop doing this from Phase 3 and onwards. Buglins apply Koth upon contact. Crux gains damage from kills. A work in progress is active to have it burst its back out. To wrap it up, Sim Enderman can teleport Roopters now and this parasite has a new crawling variant. Yep, you're hearing this right. Your favorite parasite, the Sim Enderman, got buffed. Well, kinda. Now for the group parasite changes, or multiple parasite changes, or, well, whatever you want to call it. A new variant for the heavy and flying carriers has been introduced. This variant will move faster. Upon exploding, it will inflict the same effects, but with higher amplifiers, and there are no mobs inside. Man, I gotta say, this pinata sucks. Along with that, there are new Berserker and Virulent variants. The mobs that have these variants are Bolster, Summoner, Reeker, Longarms, Arachnida, and Grunt. That goes for both their primitive and adaptive versions. Although, the Bolster is an exception since its primitive version doesn't have a Berserker variant. Berserker variants will always inflict bleeding when attacking, and Virulent types will always inflict viral when attacking and by touching them. The weak spots on the Warden, Heed, Adapted Arachnida, and Beckon Stage 4 have been tweaked. Hitting Warden, Heed, and Adapted Arachnida weak spots have a chance to cause bleeding, and damage is 3 times greater. Beckon Stage 4 now has a weak spot, hitting this will also cause bleeding, and damage is multiplied by 3. 
Parasites can gain points in all dimensions over time. A few values and conditions affect this. A new behavior has been added for the simulated tier and higher concerning a new block called Dispatcher Nidus. At Evolution Stage 1, when a parasite reaches 15 kills, it will have the ability to place this block down. If this block is fed another 40 kills, it will transform into a Dispatcher Stage 1. We'll look at this parasite in due time. If there is one already nearby, the Nidus block will simply add 120 evolution points to the world. Parasite's regeneration is affected by their kill count in this update. If their kill count is less than or equal to zero, regeneration will be cancelled. A new internal counter is in place. This will make high tier parasites utilize their kill count more effectively. I am now going to introduce to you the deadliest mechanic added to the 1.9.6 update. Say hello to Entity Orbs. Primitive, Adapted, Pure Versions, and Suckers, which is another new mob, will now spawn these orbs in combat. These orbs apply exhaustion. The severity is based on the tier parasite that summon the orbs. And if you're wondering what exhaustion does, it basically drains your saturation hunger, especially at higher amplifiers. Here are screenshots of each parasite tier and what their orbs inflict. It's... it's devastating. And if that wasn't bad enough, several parasites' orbs inflict additional debuffs to players and even buffs to other parasites. Scape and run devs, please show us some mercy. Moving past the horror that is Entity Orbs, the adaptation logic has been improved. So as you can see, the logic has more going on in the background than it once did. The main thing to note from this change is adaptation will affect specific items, not damage types. This basically means a parasite will adapt to a diamond sword, but will still be vulnerable to an iron sword. Time for another rapid fire section. Like I said, the size of this update is staggering. Fire damage against parasites is now quadrupled, which is paramount to surviving this mod. Parasite projectiles will no longer do damage to other parasites. Parasites now have their own mob cap. Parasites will lose evolution points when killed. Parasites will revert back to their previous forms when killed if there is a colony in the world. Marauder, Warden, and Reeker will spawn flame particles prior to AoE and charge attacks. Pure versions, instead of spawning grunts, will now spawn a new Caesar mob for support. Pure parasites will burst into pieces. This is still a work in progress. Primitive and higher will sometimes search and destroy blocks that emit light. This includes circuits as well. This is also a work in progress. Remember that fun exhaustion mechanic? Primitive, adaptive, and pure will apply exhaustion to players on melee hits. When a primitive evolves into their adaptive forms while burning, they will spawn at half health. Flying carrier and parasites that burst upon death will now spawn entity toxic cloud in place of entity area effect cloud. This toxic cloud spawned by carriers will apply viral, and this cloud's effects stack. Parasites struck by lightning will have their kill count increased by 1 million. Whenever a parasite's damage cap is triggered, that parasite will be given the rage effect for 7 seconds. This can stack. Parasites will break vacuous cis blocks. We will cover cis changes soon. And finally, biomass will spawn mobs with the debar effect, which is yet again something new we will cover. That's most, if not all, the old mob changes, which leads us to the new mobs. In addition to the mobs, there are two new parasite tiers, the Nexus and Preeminent tiers. Nexus is above the Adaptive tier, and Preeminent is above the Pure tier. The Preeminent parasites are heavy work in progress. The developers' plans for them haven't been fully executed. Three Walking Head parasites make their debut in this update. The Adventure Head, Enderman Head, and Ender Dragon Head. As you can imagine, these heads spawn from their prospective parasites upon taking lethal damage, with the exception of the Ender Dragon head. The Adventurer head is the weakest. It belongs in the assimilated tier, and therefore it cannot adapt to damage. This head, comparable to most heads, has the ability to leap. The Enderman head also belongs in the assimilated tier and cannot adapt to damage. This head is fast and jittery like the Sim Enderman. It also applies a weak bleeding effect. The Enderman head can still teleport itself and other parasites if they're small. This includes buglins, roopters, and small incomplete forms. The Ender Dragon head is in the assimilated tier and it cannot adapt to damage. While fighting the Sim Ender Dragon, if its neck takes too much damage, there's a chance that its head will fall off. This results in you fighting the Sim Dragon's body and its head at the same time. The Dragon head is fast and shoots projectiles like the Sim Dragon. These projectiles apply similar debuffs. This is one of the very few heads that doesn't leap. The Caesar is our next mob, and this one is a breath of fresh air because it's not a parasite that just outright kills you. This mob belongs in the deterrent tier and it can adapt to damage. 
The Caesar spawns from pure parasites. It's a utility parasite that simply grabs and holds you in place. That doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, don't forget there's a pure parasite that's about to rock your world and inevitably end it. Dispatcher Stage 1 is a support parasite belonging in the Nexus tier. This parasite can adapt to damage. Stages 2 through 4 share similar properties. Stage 1, as you already know, spawns from a Dispatcher Nidus block once it's fed 40 kills. Dispatcher S1 can break blocks that have their hardness value up to 3. This has a 60 ticks cooldown and a 1 block range. Stage 1 will grow into Stage 2 after 240 to 300 seconds. Stages 1 through 4 forces nearby assimilated parasites to drop their disguises, and they can summon a Dispatcher Tentacle Parasite. This tentacle will teleport parasites around. Since the Dispatcher Tentacle is technically a parasite, we will quickly cover its stats. Considering it comes from a Dispatcher, it's safe to say it belongs in the Nexus tier. Although, unlike the other parasites in this tier, it cannot adapt to damage. The Tentacle is another utility parasite that periodically pops out of the ground to teleport a parasite to another tentacle. This mob is stated to be a work in progress, by the way. Dispatcher Stage 2 is the same as Stage 1, but boasts better base stats. Along with that, Stage 2 can break blocks with a hardness value up to 5.5. This has a 20 ticks cooldown and 2 block range. After 300 to 360 seconds, Dispatcher S2 will grow into Dispatcher S3. Stage 3 is once again a superior version of the previous stages. Dispatcher S3 can break blocks that have their hardness value up to 7. This has a 20 ticks cooldown in a 4 block range. This Dispatcher stage is able to summon sentries to defend itself. Stage 3 will grow into Stage 4 after 600 to 1200 seconds. Dispatcher Stage 4 is the ultimate Dispatcher Parasite. S4 has all of its predecessor's abilities and more. Stage 4 can break blocks that have their hardness value up to 18. This is a 20 ticks cooldown in 5 block range. This stage can summon sentries and also dreadnought pods. These pods, when in range of their explosion, will apply cough, poison, and saturation. The saturation is a debuff that drains your hunger very quickly. At the end of its duration, you'll be left with negative hunger. You will have to eat around half a stack of steak to get your hunger into the positives again. Oh, and these pods have 45 health and 5 armor. Dropping its health to zero will prevent an explosion. Dispatcher Stage 4 can generate colonies from Phase 5 and onwards. Colonies are disabled by default. This can be modified in the SR Parasites world configs. A parasite named the Herd is joining the Crude tier, and this bad boy can adapt to damage. This monstrosity spawns after the host achieves 40 kills, and just like its precursor, the Herd can hide underground, teleport, spawn residue, and shoot viral projectiles. The main difference is instead of it spawning Roopters, the herd spawns Manglers. Manglers are an evolved version of Roopters. This parasite belongs in the Inborn tier. It can adapt to damage, and it evolves from a Roopter once it takes 30 lives. The Mangler can spawn naturally at phase 6 in groups of 3 to 6 with a spawn weight of 30. This parasite is strictly a melee mob that inflicts slowness 4 when attacking. It can climb blocks, and it can leap towards victims. The Thrall is another evolved parasite. It comes from the Sim Adventurer getting 15 kills. It belongs in the Crude tier and it can adapt to damage. This parasite spawns in groups of 3 to 5 from phase 4 through phase 6 with a spawn weight of 25. The Thrall is basically just a stronger and faster version of the Sim Adventurer. It doesn't have any new abilities. There is a new spider-like parasite joining the pure ranks. The monarch can adapt to damage and naturally spawn at phase 7 with a spawn weight of 15 in groups of 1 to 2. It can also spawn in the parasite biome in groups of 2 to 5 with a spawn weight of 5. The parasite summons buglins and caesars, shoots webs, leaps in the air, and it can charge a short distance. The monarch can also break blocks that have their hardness value up to 5. This has a 26 cooldown in 4 block range. All that's left are the new preeminent parasites. The parasites in this tier can adapt to damage. They only spawn in the parasite biome with a spawn weight of 5. They can break blocks that have their hardness value up to 15. This has a 20 ticks cooldown and 5 block range. Each preeminent parasite can summon suckers. We will cover this parasite after the preeminent parasites. The colony carrier is first up. This mob is a hard hitting melee parasite with regenerative properties. This preeminent applies regeneration 3 to nearby parasites. From what I've heard, the Haunter is the most hated parasite in this update, and for good reason. This mob will shoot a barrage of fast homing projectiles straight towards your dome. These things are incredibly hard to dodge and hit, especially when other parasites are advancing on you. 
I've also heard that this preeminent in particular is very destructive. Don't let this thing, or matter of fact, any of the preeminents near your home. What do you get when you mix a boggle and a noxious brain? A mind-boggling answer. Okay, sorry. That was my one and only dad joke for this video. If you haven't noticed yet, the preeminents have the same health and armor values, hence why their stats are receiving lower screen time. Anyhow, the boggle kind of just floats around for a little while until it decides to completely nuke you and the surrounding area. The Wraith is another flying preeminent, and unlike the other mobs in this tier, this parasite spawns in groups of two. Wraiths shoot nade projectiles like the Yellow Eye. This affects a small area. Being within this area will pretty much one-shot you. The Heavy Bomber technically isn't a new parasite, but for the sake of keeping all the preeminents in the same video section, let's just pretend it is. This beauty's range attack consists of it dropping embryo-like bombs, which destroys blocks and deals AoE damage. These bombs, upon exploding, will release a random primitive parasite, excluding the Devourer. Keep in mind that you can't break them before they detonate. Not even lava will work, though it will certainly kill whatever comes out of it. Last but not least, we have the Sucker. As previously mentioned, this parasite is summoned by other preeminents. It's in the same tier as them, and it can adapt to damage. Suckers will do one of the following when close to an enemy. Deploy an orb, explode, or teleport its summoner to itself. The sucker will then die, it can place residue when this happens. So overall, it's an extremely obnoxious parasite to deal with. More or less, that's all the mob changes 1.9.6 introduced, which means we're at the end of this video. Go check out my SRP playlist to see if part 2 is out. Thank you for watching, drop a like on the video, and make sure to subscribe for more mod-related content like this in the future. And as always, Kremlitz, stay snazzy.